So there are several solutions to fix this problem. For anybody who is watching this video, you're probably watching it because you're running into huge issues with your controller. Whether it be playing a first person shooter or playing an RPG, your gun's either aiming by itself or your character is moving by itself. So we're going to walk through some solutions to fix this with the Xbox One controller today. There are several different solutions. Uh, I'm going to start with the easiest one, guys. It involves removing a piece from the joystick module, and I'm going to move to a more complex fix for this, which involves actually adjusting the module itself. So I'd first like to give some backstory with this. The reason why this is happening are the modules that were put into the Xbox One controllers are actually very cheap. Microsoft chose the cheap route to save some money when they were releasing the console so they could lower the price to compete with the PS4. So unfortunately, the modules inside of these controllers are absolute garbage. They're foreign made from China, and they're the cheapest way that Microsoft could go. So the life expectancy of these actual joystick modules are, is about three months. It's, it's actually pathetic. For people who play frequently like me, which I play Call of Duty and RPGs, etc., um, people that play frequently, that's probably less than 30 days before you start experiencing problems. So Microsoft really chose the cheap route on this. It sucks. Um, if your controller is still under warranty, meaning that if you bought a new controller, if it's within the first three months, or if you bought a console and it's a console controller that came with the console, and it's within the first year, I would recommend sending the controller back to Microsoft for a newer controller before you attempt to fix it. Because you're going to void the warranty once you break into the back of this controller, guys. And the newer controllers that Microsoft is making actually has the newer modules that last a little bit longer. So call them, send it in for a warranty exchange, and tell them that you want one with newer modules because it it's, uh, it's really, really tedious, and you don't want to have to deal with that problem again. But getting into it, guys, with the first solution, like I said, that we're going to be talking about is the easiest solution. And what we're going to need to do is turn over the controller to the back. We're just going to be removing a component from the joystick module, whichever joystick you're having problems with. So to start this, just simply open up the back and remove the batteries. You're going to have to break through uh, this sticker right here on the back underneath the battery compartment to gain access to that screw so you can disassemble the controller. So before I go any further, I would like to state that what you're going to need for this is one very, very, very small flathead screwdriver set. Make sure you got some different bits. You're going to have to find one that is going to fit inside of these screws as they are tamper-proof screws. If you have a tamper -proof, if you have a tamper-proof screw set, that will work as well. Um, most people don't have those tamper-proof screw sets, but a simple, very small flathead screwdriver will work. You just need to find a bit that is small enough. You're going to need some tape, whether it be scotch tape or packing tape or electrical tape, some tape that's not really that adhesive. Um, and you're going to need a flat surface or a bowl or something to store the screws so you don't lose any of the screws as we want to be able to put the controller back uh, secure so it's not loose you're not having any components you know rocking around inside of there and make sure everything's nice and secure and tight but getting into it guys um, there's five screws you have to remove to disassemble the controller there's the one right there I just showed you and you pop off these plastic pieces on either side you can either use a flathead screwdriver or your fingernails to get up underneath of them and simply pop them off. They remove that easily. Just make sure you don't apply too much pressure, don't break anything. So you have the screw in the center and then you have a screw right here and a screw right here, one right here, and one right here. So there are two on the right side, two on the left side, and one in the center. There's five screws you need to remove. And just remember to use a very small flathead screwdriver. Kind of go in at an angle and get the flathead screwdriver on one side of that screw because it's a safety uh, secure screw tamper proof and just rotate it counterclockwise. So get all five of those screws out, guys. I've already got those removed for you all uh, just to speed up the process of this video. But like I said, if you have a tamper-proof screw set, obviously that's going to work better. But many people don't have that. A small flathead screwdriver, if you find the right size, will work to remove those. Once you're done with that and the screws are, re screws are removed, we're just going to rotate the controller uh, this way. And we're going to remove the faceplate. It should just lift right up now. So once the faceplate is removed, guys, uh, all we're going to need to do is just remove these rubber joystick pieces off the modules themselves. They simply just pop up as you can see and this fix is the easiest fix it involves removing a small plastic piece on the joystick module itself I don't know if you all can see it right there um, it's right to the left of the module 
and it's a very small gray plastic piece. And what that is used for is to keep the joystick module in place and keep it from rocking back and forth. However, it's not really needed once you have the faceplate on. Um, it's just there as an extra precaution to keep it more secure. However, the problem that many people are experiencing is that plastic piece is starting to get loose and raise up. Uh, anytime that they're using the controller, if you if you use your controller quite, quite frequently, those pieces are starting to raise up and it's starting to jam up the controller and cause joystick drift. So I've seen a lot of tutorials online, guys, about removing these and gluing them back down to make them more, more secure. But I highly recommend against that as it could cause huge problems with your controller. And if you get glue or super glue anywhere else in those modules, it's going to it's going to cause huge problems. You all are going to be stuck with a controller that you can't even use anymore. But this is the piece I just removed. Uh, put it up to where you all can see it. It's just a very small gray uh, piece of plastic that was on the side of the joystick module. So let's see if I can get this close to show you all where it was. It was right there. So... Removing that has resolved the issue for many people. That's the easiest solution. After you remove that piece, you're going to want to clean out the joystick module. So obviously I recommend air duster if you have something else or you just want to blow down underneath of those. Just make sure you don't get any condensation inside of those joystick modules. That definitely will cause problems, but you all are going to want to take some air duster. Make sure you keep it vertical. Do not tilt the air duster on its side or upside down. You want to avoid getting any of that condensate inside of the actual joystick module itself and blow around the joystick module on the inside of it. Just move it around a little bit and repeat the process to get any dead skin cells or dust that would be underneath there and clean out all of that gunk. But once you have that done, guys, all you need to do is just simply put the little rubber pieces back on the joystick modules. Put the faceplate back on the controller and then put all five screws back in place. Uh, like I said previously, make sure that you keep those screws somewhere secure so you're not going to lose those. You're going to need all five of those to make the controller secure to keep any components from moving around inside. Once you have those screws back in place, just pop the pieces of plastic back on the side, put your batteries back in, and test your controller. And that should resolve the issue. That has worked for a lot of people. So... If you're still running into the problem where that did not resolve the issue for you, then that means that the joystick modules themselves are off calibration and you have been very rough on your controller. So I'm going to show you all how to adjust the joystick module itself. This is a little bit more complicated.